Hello. 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 Hi, um, Justin. Hello, I'm Kevin. Topsy, Sabrina. Sean. Oh, hey, Jim. Hi. Hi, Matt. Hi, Matt. Oh, yeah, the other guy. Jim, that guy. Yeah. <laughs> so we have our yeah. Please, everybody, mute yourself except Roxy. We have today our guest um, of the show, Roxy, and Jim and I will be hosting. Uh, Roxy, how do you say your full name? You're Roxanne Swainhart. Yes, Roxanne Swainhart. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. So uh, I would like uh, you. Uh, okay, our audience who are new to Roxy, it's uh, Roxy is a real deal, real channeler. Real, real, and more, more. She was around much longer than we were. Jim started channeling last uh, May. a year and f last May, yeah, yeah, a year and a half ago, almost. And Roxy has been around longer, and she has her following. So we are really honored and pleased to be to have her first official uh, webinar with us. Yes. Very exciting. So Roxy, but also Roxy is, I believe, is a hippie soul, and I love hippies. And she speaks that hippie language, which I don't master. And you have to say, babe and groovy. So Jim, I let you introduce <laughs> yourself. Uh, Roxy, please introduce yourself, physical and otherwise. Yes. And Jim, speak that language, please. Yeah. OK, that's groovy. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Uh, farm yeah. out, man. You're so farmy. I love it. No, you're good. <laughs> so I'll introduce. Go ahead. Go ahead. You were going to say something. I just wanted. I was going to say, go ahead and introduce yourself. I'm really interested in how you got started and mm -hmm. uh, how you how things progress for you. Sure. You have a wonderful message. It's so high. It's so beautiful. And uh, I'm really interested in a lot of things. So. Yes. Well, let me rock and roll with that idea. Um, as far as the spiritual awakening, it was September of last year. I started channeling October of last year and did my first recording. Uh, I think it posted on YouTube in, in right early November. So not quite a year as far as the channel. Uh, but yeah, we also went online public in October and November. Yes. So did yeah. we. Yeah, oh, sync. <laughs> and uh, that's when I, it was, it was September. Um, to give you the background, I was uh, in a sales, car sales manager for 16 years in the business, spent three years selling cars, and the rest has been in management. And I was whole 3D, worked my way up, climbed the company ladder, become a general manager, make stupid money, buy stupid things to have a stupid great life, you know. You know, we we call money in the in the car business stupid because it's just so much. You know, God, just you know. So that's a term that's you know, deemable to the car business. So, anyways, um, uh, I had a you know, a 2010, the this whole calling of being a transgender came into play. And I've always been, let's say, and we're going to be explicit here, so, you know, buckle in, had, uh, you know, sexual tendencies towards both male and female, but I never considered myself from the young age of 12, when I start feeling these feelings, that of being gay. I didn't see myself man to man, and I didn't understand it at the time. So, you know, just like most transgenders and most... Uh, you know, uh, what we call gay and lesbian community, you know, sexual preference choice, hide it at some point or another. You put it in a closet, but it, but it's, you can't cage the soul. You can't cage it. It's always going to beckon you, and you're going to express it one way or the other, whether it's in anger, whether it's in disease, because you're at dis-ease, you know, and you hold things inside of you that you're, Natural self is urging, and as those beckonings call and more and more people around the world say, yes, this is who I am, and it's okay, and more and more people accept it because now they have the 
comfort in numbers. So that becomes an acceptable paradigm of the collective. So gay, straight, and now transgender in that fashion is becoming more and more commonplace because that's what humans are. We are our choice of that expression, so be it. Beautiful. So in 2010, I could not resist it anymore. I didn't understand it. And then it kind of fell into place through my third ex-wife. I have a set. Thank you. <laughs> so she, you know, expressed that maybe that's this. And then, poof, it was done. The bell went off. Everything fell into place. I'm not gay. I'm heterosexual. But I'm a female in a male body in that idea. But now I understand my relationship. And... If I can tell you the sense of peace, and probably an easy equatability to it is if you someone handed you a $130 million after taxes take-home lottery ticket, you're like, holy sh... Ah. Ah, you know, that was it. But it was multiplied because it had nothing to do with the outside relationship. It was such an inner peace. When that piece of the puzzle fell into place... Every concern, every, every single concern for the outside validation was gone, done, out. And I didn't have to satisfy, please accept, and do all of these things to the outside world. And it became, it became that of unprecedented freedom. I, could, I can't explain it. It's like you got into a candy store when you're five years old and the parents lock the door and say, have fun and we'll be gone, you know, for a couple of weeks. You know, everything was perfect. So that's when I started my shift and I was still in the car business and I was a manager at a very esteemed car dealership in Las Vegas. And I told what was going on to my management group and the owner said, as long as you do the job you're doing, then I don't care if you wear a skirt or not. So I stayed there a year and a half, and then after that, I just couldn't do it anymore. Couldn't be that anymore. Oh, because so it, you I, I wore a skirt for a year and a half in a car management and established. Oh, I, yeah. You know, that's what he said. It doesn't matter. So I did my full transition on July 1st, 2010, is when I walked out of the my house and never walked out of the house other than representation of that of female, me, of what I choose how, to be. How did the public take it? Did this buy cars better than, than before? or Well, you, you know, know being in, well, the manager position I was in, I was <laughs> a desk manager. That was oh, okay. where the salesman would go up and that's when the customers would look at the person behind the desk and, you know, get, you know, and we the salesman was the liaison, so to speak. So that's what my job. I was the desk manager. And then they accommodated me by moving me off the desk because the interactions with customers and, believe it or not, I look a lot better than I did <laughs> fashionably as well as understanding how to express my womanhood than when I first transitioned. My hairs were short and I wasn't on hormones. and So it was a little bit more a posing to most general customers because you don't walk into a million dollar dealership and see a transgender that's not passable behind the desk controlling your car deal. The trust validation kind of goes out. That's no fault of any individual. That's the human psyche and that's what I as an individual chose to push the envelope of the human collective to accept all the possibilities and probabilities of humankind. Not that I knew it at the time, most certainly. However, I did understand that this was me and I was not going to let anyone on the outside tell me different. Although I was scared shitless in a lot of points. Very scary to do that. Oh, but can you talk about spiritual component of that? So, do you know the answer? You're really a female soul. Do I know? No, there's to me. There's no female soul. There is only the vibration of expression that of male and female that you would choose in the moment. We deem it as a permanency of a lifetime hood, as a lifetime, as the let's say physical body validates that. But I know, and everyone else in this room knows, there are attributes of both vibrations within you. Yeah. And I express that in the moment of that. It never defined me past the moment. Sometimes I'm very ladylike, and sometimes I'm not so ladylike. But that's my expression of the vibration of that 
let's say, unity of male and female that we have separated between intuition and ego throughout time, and then, you know, we have deemed you're a male, then you need to be this, and then you take all the attributes and look around at male figures, and you take the belief systems of that, and hence that's your vibration, and you never consider to even play within the other realm. So I have chosen that to represent that everyone can express both parts of their, whether it's in fullness like this or not. That doesn't matter. It's up to the individual just to know that you are both, and you can express both. Whether you choose to or not is still up to you. It's just an offering that I found that I absolutely love to represent because it brings harmony with all of the attributes and abilities that you can have understanding within you. So as far as that, I think we represent vibrations in certain densities as either more male or more female or the unison of one or none. I don't know. I don't know everything all about it up there, but down here, I love the vibration of female, but attributes of male, very good as well. Because it helps in some ideas, and this helps in some ideas. So when I left the car business after a year and a half of being a female, being accepted somewhat, I just knew I couldn't do this anymore. My parents said, move out to San Antonio. I did. For a year, I didn't do much. I tried to get jobs in the car business. No one was taken because it was, you know, I didn't want to be a salesman. I'm not going to go backwards. That was my ego getting in the way. He says, wait a minute. You know, I can pen out pencil you and, you know, the manager I was interviewing any day of the week. Ego, of course. Even my male personality because I was looking for security. I said, okay, I've made 120 to 150 average for the past 10, 12 years at this job. I'm not going to walk in here at 50, 60K. No, get out of here. You know, I want what I'm worth, and I could not get that. So, you know, frustration left. That's when I start waking up inside. I start looking in, makes like, you know, a couple different points in my life, being the philosopher, the writer. I didn't know I was talking to different things and different parts of myself, but going inside. And I did it again, and then poof, it was in. My parents, here it is. Here's the pinnacle moment. My parents said, your unemployment has run out. You're infringing upon our, uh, what do you call it, retirement. You're costing us money now. And I was, and that was their absolute right, their belief. And I said, you're right. I need to do something. And that moment, and I'm telling you that moment when I was done with that conversation, I had a sense of peace just like the day I considered myself a woman that I got this. And that's when it all shifted. In a month's time, actually, no, three weeks' time, the Veterans Administration, I got on the housing program with Bear County. So I got moved, I got a job at uh, West Communications doing inbound phone calls because I knew I needed to give up the status of what I was worth and start this, and I knew it wasn't permanent. So in a matter of three weeks, I moved out of the house into an apartment synchronistically. I got a, uh, let's say, housing voucher if everyone, anyone knows out there. You don't get one in a week's time. I got one in a week's time and it moved my, into my apartment two weeks later. Usually it takes three months. Well, that was my reality saying, here you go. And then got the job. And on that job was my communications with customers. For them to call, apply for a, a what you call a um, credit card. It was a mailer they would send out. Well, I threw away the script right after training, and I start talking to people, and I made 54 friends in, in two weeks' time from Facebooks for the communications I was doing. I was talking to them as humans. I was not looking for a status or quota or any of that crap. And then I, even in the job, they kept it too cold. I don't like the cold. I mean, I don't mind cold outside, but it don't, don't keep the room inside. It's 68 freaking degrees. I didn't like that. Ten-minute breaks twice a day. I didn't like that. And all of a sudden, I said, start feeling all these confining rules on my human spirit that said no more. So one month after I started, I quit. Went on to Vista.com, started Odyssey of Ascension. This awakening, poof, I was awake. I started, and one thing led to another to I start automatic writing. I have a blog channel. That's some. These are some of my automatic writings on uh, Odyssey of Ascension on WordPress. 
and then uh, poof. I you know, start speaking the language of Parisian one day, got that, start translating it, and then Hugh came in, an entity, says, you're going to be a conscious channeler, and I'm here to offer you the choice if you want to become that, and we'll teach you how, and I said, oh, yeah. And then after that, now you know me as I am today. Excellent. Um, so, wonderful, thank you, that is an amazing story. I want to jump right into channeling right now, and I would like to invite, in a minute, I would like well, want to start the chat. Uh, you know, go into channel in in a minute or two. And uh, I think the most interesting the topic is uh, how who is who is in control of events in our life? Is it human collective? Is it other collective? Is it higher mm -hmm. self? <clears throat> is it our physical mind? Is it our spirit guides? That's sort of the topic. What uh, what is bringing luck and mischief in our life? But uh, while we kind of uh, pivot our thinking into that direction, I wanted to just to thank you. Uh, you answered all my questions. One of my questions was, yes, there is a dissonance. There is cognitive dissonance between what you see and what you hear, the female and male, and all of us are, have that component. I have very strong female component, and it took many years to realize that I have been a female in many past lives, and I feel grandmotherly most of the time. And uh, it just happened that you know uh, I grew up as a male here, but uh, you know that female component I use it. I'm soft. I use its fluid, uh, fluid component most of the time in my life. And many of us do. Uh, so, but also I wanted to comment that the dissonance maybe it first repels some of the viewers, but also it helps. Uh, helps elevation of the spirit because when uh, people see you channeling there is that dissonance, discordance, uh, cognitive discordance which disconnects us from the reality and brings us up if we choose to. So I think it is very important and, and I think it's also very healthy. It is very healthy to be in the middle, yeah. to realize that you are both. It is very healthy. It's not sick. It is... No. Not at all. And that's why we're changing it. That's why we're expressing it. This, yeah, okay, let me give you this. I did my first channeling, and I didn't know I was being recorded by my friend Wink. It's the Bashar channeling I did. And, they, I mean, it you know, went 2,800 views in a couple of days, and, and there was 10,000 comments. And, you know, who is this, you know, you know, using every slang word and dissonance for transgender wig, fake boobs, everything, just all the all the negative stuff and I was like, I love it. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Expose the beliefs to yourself that you don't need to choose this. So I'm serving a purpose by offering a possibility of humanity. Otherwise it wouldn't be here. It wouldn't be within the construct of the human collective as a possibility in representation through my expression if it wasn't part of the collective agreement to allow it in in that idea. So here, choose or not, but either way, you're only going to get back what you are in the mirror and vibration. And as as the negative come in, more and more positive come in and says, awesome, I love it, I love it. And then it became this beautiful, fluid idea, and then, you know, people were like, okay, maybe, maybe, and then their apologies and different things like that. And it doesn't matter what it was, it was just here, do what you will with it so you can see in the mirror of reflection that what you are, what you prefer and what you don't prefer. That's my offering. That's everyone's offering. And that's why I love the allowance of any entity in any moment, in any now, to express themselves as their truth in that moment to see in the mirror of reflection what they are. And it's beautiful. So, booyah. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um... You, you, when you channel, you're so uh, lucid, and do you feel like your DNA has changed since you started channeling? Do you feel like you've changed in any way spiritually? Because I know that I have, I have a lot of feelings about that, so I wanted to see what your feelings were. You know, of course, another little synchronicity. I love how we set things up and we just catch up to them in the moment and go, oh my God, we're playing this out. I had this thought. Yay. <laughs> so, um, yeah, absolutely. What, okay, the idea that I, and I got 
uh, and I, I read a ton of books um, that I've, I've read more in the last year than I did since I was born, truly. And I've laughed more in the last year since I was born before I woke, before I woke up. <laughs> Let me tell you, laughter is what we're after. Try it because <laughs> it changes things. So I think laughter is part of enlightenment, per se. Oh, I, oh yeah, most certainly. So I looked at the DNA idea, and I and I looked and I validated through a couple of different things. It was uh, Ramtha, uh, Ra, and then my Council of Eleven. When I took that Council of Eleven in, you know, true Council talking to them. And I asked these questions that were prevalent. There were a lot of questions I had, but you know, as I'm discussing with them, some things I really didn't need to understand. They just came in their moment of expression, moment of understanding. In other words, perfect timing. So the DNA, yeah, we are, as a collective, this is what I really, really believe. And of course, this is a perspective, so take what you will. There's three ideas of awakening of DNA. Hence three. I love that number. The first is already born. The second is what this is all about. This timeline of awakening in that as you were, let's say, going beyond your belief systems, allowing more of your physical brain to connect more neurons. We all know that. You're actually physically changing your brain. Along with that, wakes up the DNA in the second of the two th Okay, there's two thirds. Yeah two-thirds that are not being used. So the one-third is at birth. The middle two-thirds is what we're waking up right now, our new abilities of te telepathy, teleportation, biolocation, you know, things like that, that we are good transconscious, uh, not only astral as like a deep meditation to get there, but just immediately go, I got to go. And you're gone and you come back in that split moment. But you live an entire experience of time over there and then you're back a minute later here with no loss of time because time's an illusion. So that's the second half that we're opening up. And the third half, I haven't talked about that much, to, but I know what you're talking about, Jim. You change. You shift. The body, my body, oh, yeah, most certainly has changed. My doctors don't understand because I'm on hormones, so I go to the VA and they check my levels. And they go, since you've been on hormones, so actually about a month, two months before I started hormones, they said you've gotten healthier. How do you get healthier? And I said, well, because I believe I'm healthier. I don't believe in age because that's a belief. I don't believe in cholesterol, so my cholesterol is wonderful. I eat exactly 100% of the time what my body is urging me to. If it's meat, so be it. If it's bread, so be it. If it's cheese, so be it. If it's milk, so be it. If it's a nice glass of red Merlot, so be it. So I shift as my body tells me, and the representation of my absolute health is beautiful. The doctors don't understand how everything gets better, and they every time I go in to get my blood pressure taken, they have to take it twice because they go, you can't have 84 over 54. I said, yes, I can. It's your standard that you believe needs to be within this realm that makes it so. But now I'm showing you a new representation of humanity that is beyond your concert, con, constructive belief system based off of the repetition of the past. But if live that, you recreate that. I'm showing you change. I'm showing you a new human species evolving with abilities and healings in instant moment because everything is vibration. This is light. This cell phone's made of light. It's not plastic. It's light vibrating at a certain frequency collapsed down from gross mass to finite mass to represent this. My body's the same. So I know I'm vibration in vibration correct with my love for this body, the representation that I got healthier. And now with the DNA, the attributes become more. The expressions become more. The feelings become more. The, the senses of the beings that are hanging out around in all of your nows, because everything is here and now, are there in the presence to be felt if you let go of the idea on how to and trust the feeling of your new DNA waking up to the ability that we are becoming, as Bashar said, quasi 
beings shifting quasi translucent this is where we're going and in the DNA gym has a huge amount to do with it and I think or I believe any venue of men or any venue that allows you to go beyond your current construct, whether it's channeling, automatic channeling, healing, anything that is not collectively believed as reality by the collective that is what deemed in this time as humanity, going beyond that can only trigger more responses in your because your frequency is higher within your body. Laughter. You're happy. You're excited. And if you look at, and I learned this one, you're going to love this one. Look at wavelengths. Long wavelengths are lower frequency. Higher like that are higher frequencies. So as your frequencies run through your body and more repetition in shorter intervals but long, higher as far as vertical instead of long swoops in the lower vibration. <laughs> you go to higher, 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 higher. That goes to your body. That triggers more DNA because your DNA is getting hit more by your vibration. It's pinging off your DNA at a more higher frequency, awakening more attributes of said DNA. My theory, anyway. That's what I learned that I brought forth. Make sense? Yes. Yes, and I feel more like a child now than I ever did before. I mean, I, you grow up and you get into those long wavelengths and then all of a sudden, now I'm feeling more childlike and more energetic about a lot of things. So I agree. Yay! So. You're welcome. Thank you. All right. So, oh, hi, Shakti. That's another cat. We have a few here. Let me see. <laughs> okay. So, uh, do we want to channel and you guys ask questions, or what do you want yeah. to do now? That would be great to see you like All right. Awesome, Blossom. So, again, don't mind the cats in the household. We have. Plants a very, very loving community household. <laughs> Check my camera position. Okay. <clears throat> And greetings to the collective. This is Osipius from the Oversoul Collective Fire. I bid you all a good day. How are you? Doing well, well Osipius. Perfect. Wonderful. First off, let me say once again our eternal gratitude. That gets skipped over a lot because it's kind of, let's say, saying hello. How are you? And when really do you mean how are you? Because everyone says fine. But truly, is that what it is? So our eternal gratitude is heart felt or without your belief of vibration trust in this co-creative moment this is another expression that would be unrealized a reality over there that no one would have chose to experience by changing their vibration so once again eternal gratitude continue thank you you uh, you're speaking to a new audience some of us have seen other videos of you but most of us haven't can you introduce yourself well, again, Osiphius, I am part of an oversoul. That oversoul is called fire. It is a large oversoul, that of this being me and several of me being this in this representation as well, known as Roxanne, Rakia, Nimikoto, and such other entities, Palia, Kenia, Nukudu, from the Hathor civilizations, several to name. So the higher self of Roxanne is an incarnation of the Oversoul Fire. I am part of that entire construct in that idea. I am currently what you would call, let's say we got this, and this is a limiting fashion, however, collectively the human humanity has chosen it because we work in a logical intellectual idea, so we gave the paradigm of densities and within those densities is certain ideas of level, but those levels were giving an understanding. There is much more than that. 
There's much more than the idea of densities. But this understand is a representation so you can learn the understanding. You see a wheel, but you don't know the uses of a wheel until you experiment with the wheel, and then it becomes more than what you ever dreamed it could actually do, much like densities. So in that fashion, I am in what you call a ninth density, but I am not representing any idea of a species in that a civilization, much like the Hathors, the Pleiadians, Andromedans, Syrian, Lyrian, have what you will. I just play in the field of a solar system, and I am currently a density, which you would understand, ninth, as an incarnation of what you would understand, a constellation. And your idea, take hmm, Ro Roxanne, Sagittarian. Sagittarian constellation. I am all of the vibration, all the interactions between all the understandings of interaction that make up what you would call a star constellation within a solar system, within a galaxy, within a universe. Not this Akashica universe you are experiencing now. Through many portals to get up there, to get down here, but of course everything is here and everything and now, so the journey is that of easement, of course. It's just a matter of turning your head easily. Go ahead. I wanted to start um, the conversation with the question of uh, God's providence. Mm -hmm. You know, when we live, we see a lot of intelligence behind the random events. So random events are not really random. There are synchronicities, but some of the synchronicities are even much more smart. It looks like somebody behind the scenes is organizing events and bringing <coughs> us uh, luck or mischief. Uh, and obviously there are candidates like higher self, God, uh, spirit guides, uh, physical mind, uh, subconscious, um, and many other, and uh, extraterrestrials, angels, and many other kind of intelligent personalities. Can you comment or explain from your perspective what, how should we at this point of our development, what is most productive? How should we look at their providence and intelligence behind the scenes? Wonderful question. I'll offer some clarity on this. First and foremost, let me have you understand this, and we are going to go to a basic idea. If a child is born upon a desert island and never understands the representation on the outside of himself, that an identification of God, then that child, outward, trusting, coveting the outside as reality, would never have the concept of God. Although innately within, it would understand most certainly that of spirituality, something beyond itself. However, with no definable understanding that was taught through the outside and the environment, that of parents, teachers, friends, companions, call what your relationship to the outside does not matter. But if there was no outside coveting idea to give the representation of God, how, entities, do you wake up? Hmm. All right. Now... Let's go back 500 years. How many gods were there? Well, there was the one big god, that of Jehovah and Jesus, his son. Of course. But also, in other constructs and other countries, there was a god. Before that, there were several gods. Before that, there was no god. There was only the haphazard, let's say, chances of understanding of conscience going in and out. However, in that time, you were a let's say, a lot more aware of your conscious awareness and you were a lot more shifting in time to your other probable selves. Oh, yes. But now you constructed the ego identification centered and that became the PowerPoint of now of blazing the trail of humanity. But without guidance, you were, let's say, going nowhere. Now, when I'm saying, let's say, you were was the collective needed a new idea, and this is who is in the background, okay? Humanity, the collective. Let's put it in an idea of a council, because that is a good representation of that. But 
truly every single one that is in any point of now is in 100% instant counsel with each other. You don't need the idea of a council, call to order, let's have some meeting, you may speak first, none of that. It's all instant in the moment. That's how beautiful intelligence you are, beyond that of measure, truly. So in that representation behind the sea, humanity is always individualized its own control beyond itself to give itself the idea of Godship to wake up, to wake up, to wake up, to wake up. And we're keeping this relevant to this question. So in the idea of the negativity, the polarity, the alpha, the omega, the up, down, left, right, the world of polarity that you are in receivership up because you chose this certain focus of conscience. How do you know what to, let's say, all right, I'll give you this. When your spirit, when you are in yourself as the individual singularity of the mind of God, you have and are and feeling everything sequential taneous. Whatever you choose, and we'll put it in simple terms, okay? You hold out your hand, I'd like a cupcake, poof. I'd like a margarita, poof. I'd like a million dollars, poof. I'd like a Ferrari, poof. I'd like a new woman, poof. I'd like a new man, poof. Does not matter. I'm equating it to what you can define, but truly there is way beyond the understanding of your understanding right now. But the idea is that you are God. You know it, and you have anything that you want. Poof, 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 poof. Easily. But down here, you forgot, so you need to understand what you're not. How do you understand what you're not? By giving you things that you choose not to be, an offering. You already know you're God, but you forgot. So through 16.3 billion years of several accumulated collapsed lifetimes, okay, in that idea of years, you've given yourself an understanding of what God is truly in this now. And that is that God is you. But without the polarity of choice, you cannot choose only good. Okay, let me throw this in here. The various degrees of emotion within what you would call your gray civilization is about 2 to 3% from good to, let's say, mediocre. That's it. You shift from complete sorrow to complete joy within a second, don't you? You have that emotional span. They are always what they are. In humanity, you had to give yourself the down to have the up to understand, I don't like this anymore. Let me choose this. Ah, but this has worked for a thousand years, so let me continue because I need that. So the behind the scenes, and now we will get into this, is a choice of the human collective, and we'll call him Lucifer. There is an oversoul called Lucifer. This oversoul truly is an oversoul of unconditional love. Choosing voluntarily to give the human collective through the agreement of humanity to offer what you are not. The negativity, the power, the greed, the hate, the sorrow, the suffering. Period. You are doing this so you can see what you're not. Otherwise, how do you know what you are? With no covenant idea of God, several gods in your age, listen now, and we've said this before, in your age of that of Taurus, what was your number one god in the age of Taurus? The age of Taurus was the Egyptian, hmm? the bull deity. All you have to do is look in history, real simple. Out of all the gods, they picked the bull deity. And who did Moses? Bring forth two sacrifice, the golden calf, the bull deity, with one God. So you went from several to one, from the age of Taurus to the age of Aries, the fire age. During the age of, oh, let me find out, Ram, Ra, Ramta, Brahma, everything that represents the ram. And the number one blazer of, let's say, war was the battering ram. This is not coincidence, this is set up. So you have an age that's equatable to what was occurring in the time. Several gods to one god, to the age of Pisces, 2000, 0 to 2000. Who is Pisces? Oh, what does it represent? A fish. Who is fish? 
Christianity. Period. Now you are a cord between this world and that world. You are not separate from God. You are connecting through the sun, the representation of yourself, which a lot of you missed, that is, that is who you are to be that of God. So you represented yourself as the Christ conscience with this one entity to show the collective. But of course it was diced and sliced by the ones that were in charge that deemed, let's say, we can have a lot of control. Because Constantinople was actually a witch. His mother was a Wiccan. But no one was buying into the Wiccan as much as they were buying into this guy called Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And they bought into that system, and therefore he took control of it and spawned the old Catholic Church, which became a great asset for believability in God that you were not so separate from God as in the God of Jehovah, the God of fear, the God of hate, the God of thunder, the God of torture. And then it was a little bit of release and releasement from that, that you actually had eternal love within, and all you had to do was just give your love over and accept Christ as your Savior. But that's not the idea, but that's what it was turned into. And the Vatican, of course, will release its 12 books, 12, 13 books, it's debatable, if, uh, of all the books that were taken out of context that would give too much power back to the people instead of taking God out of you and putting it in a figurehead known as a church or a priest or a father or anything that you've come up with, ministers and such things. But without that, listen, entities, you don't understand. Because when you don't know anything about God, how do you find your way home without the representation of God from several to one to being in to now the age of Aquarius, which is the water bearer spirit, water. That's what water is. Physical is ice. Spirit is water, period. So the water bearer is pouring itself knowing that you are the spiritual being of that, of God, period. This is the transitional state. This was all planned out with the astrological collective. There is an entire collective as astrological signs and let's say civilization is a best equitable understanding. They are in what you call the human collective idea council. They give offering and wake up calls. Everyone looks at the time that you are in and you look in the past and go, why were they like that? I can tell you why. Because they knew nothing else. Because nothing was represent, representation, pardon me, representing anything that would be equatable to what you understand in this now. 20 years ago, no one understood fully what channeling is. Now, it's a daily thing. Anywhere you want to look on the internet, there's somebody channeling. But without the representation of that being valid by the ones that started it, truly Edgar Casey, number one channeler that came out, then, of course, the Bashars and the, let's say, Ramta, who else is out there? That's Jay-Z Knight, right? Yes. As well as uh, Abraham Hicks and Esther and Jerry and that kind of idea. But those representation, now it's commonplace. But you go back 100 years, they would have plugged, or rather, poked a hole in your head, drilled a hole to let out the demons. A hundred years ago. Do you understand how far you've come? You must give yourself the idea of what is not in full free will choice to continue to fear what is not or to now know after all of the played out timelines through your hundreds of thousands of lives taking all those memorable DNA moments of equational expansion and bringing into this PowerPoint of now as an available tool to see where you know you don't need to choose that and you have the vibrational peace and understanding that you are in an idea, maybe not fully trusting, maybe not fully believing, that's okay, that you are the individual expression in the mind of God and you choose your own reality according to your beliefs and there is no judgment by God himself because that would be thwarting the entire idea of you in and of itself. How do you know who you're not? In, or, no, no, we'll, we'll not equate that to humanity. We'll equate it to God. How do you know all of your possibilities? God saying, why would I condition myself? Therefore, I do not know myself in fullness. 
And any conditioning, this is God's words, any conditioning of myself would only end in a matter of time because all conditionings have a conclusion. Therefore, creativity would have stopped before you were even a thought in an idea of an expression. So God has no conditions, no limitations, no nothing. And the courtesy that you as entities can extend upon the human collective at this time is the same grace God has given you. Unconditional, unbridled, untethered expression of free will. Give those in the Garden of Eden that you provide as an unconditional basis for them to be that and allow them to express with no judgment or concern or consideration of right or wrong. Allow them to discover themselves like you have been doing for a long time to get to this understanding. Those allowed you to be that. Give them the consideration and that will only accelerate vertically the ascension of humanity, not linearly because you need to condition in order for them to see, which is the same vibration as putting up a wall, security, separation, that of other. There is no other. There is one. Go ahead. That was the statement of the most complex simplicity. It, That's it's, what the universe is. The universe yeah. truly is an intricate, simple idea. Look at it simply and not detail yourself so much with the complexities, and you will flow through the spider web much as a butterfly floats through your backyard. That was so enlightening. Believe me, I, I learned so much from that that I, I actually felt like I lifted out of my body in some, some places of that. So Wonderful. I just want to say thank you for that insight and the, thank you for that beautiful um, being. I mean, j we just have to be who we are, and if we just be who we are, then it's going to come to us if we open ourselves up to that. So, Let me give you a quote, absolutely, written in the first book of that of Conversations with God by Neil Walsh. God had these words. If you can be yourself with no fear of public scrutiny in any of your actions, put this book down, you're done. That's it. That was the most simplest idea that God could express to the collective through that modality. The idea to be yourself with no fear of the outside will only, only show you through those synchronistic moments of trial and error, if you want to put it that way, but in those synchronistic moments of acting upon your joy, because everyone is unconditional love, even though it may deem by an other as not so unconditional love, however, to that entity, that battle, that mind, it is. Period. Because you are always vibrating love, conditioned by your perceiving mind of believability, acceptable reality. So God said, be that, and that will unfold truly who you are in the mirror of reflection through synchronistic moments of action upon your highest excitement. Be that. There is no judgment. Trust it. Go ahead. Right. The one question I know that a lot of people will have for you uh, will be that, how can I let go? I live in 3D. How can I let go of 3D to uh, get there? As Ramtha said, be happy with who you are, where you are, right now and then you will no longer try to escape of who and when and how you are. That only lets go of the conditioning idea of truly what you are within. That means don't try to escape from 3D. Choose 3D as the choice that you have made. Accept it and that will shift you out of 3D into new realms, new realities, new understandings while co-creating the idea of third density. Third density is truly a gift. I don't know if you know this, but when you're in spirit, you don't get to eat a steak, have a glass of wine, and let's say have a touch of a lover, have a sense of a smell of the morning dew. Don't get the sunshine on your face. Oh, no. You don't feel the breeze in spirituality. You experience it by choice, but not the same in the frequency vibration that of 3D. So once you understand that 3D is a gift, your choice to leave, to express it fully, becomes different. Yes. You express it in the fullness with not leaving because that is, let's say, what is that doing? It's taking your focused attention over to leaving instead of seeing the gifts that are truly around you. And allowing that 
with the practicum of being yourself in the moment and accepting that every point in your reality is for you and not happening to you, you will shift most dramatically in a vibrational sense that equatable to a rocket ship leaving the atmosphere instead of driving along a road haphazardly in your life. Truly, that is the idea. Don't try to escape. Don't try to do anything. Allow your higher mind, and this is where a lot of people get lost, and we'll give this impartation. Your higher mind is always talking to you. Here's how it works, and we'll give this as a quote through the entity of Daryl Anka as Bashar, for he brought it forth to the collective first. There are three minds. The first mind is your conceiving, second is your receiving, and third is your perceiving. This is your higher self, period. It is God. It is you. That thought is unconditional, unconditional, unconditional thought of love. Here it comes. Goes to the receiving mind. This receiving mind is the physicality to give you the symbol, sound, sight, smell of everything that is experienced that you can equate to awareness. Conscious. Conscious. Thank you. And in that, it goes to the perceiving mind, the filter, what you call believability of an acceptable reality around you. That is where you judge or push away or even consider that thought. And as you allow more excitable thoughts, because that's what they are, not blocked by fear, but fear always takes place, doesn't it? Okay? And I'll give you an equatable idea. Walk off a cliff and know that you're going to fall or walk off a cliff and know that you're going to float. Either one. They're all realities only according to your believability of what you trust. You trust gravity, you will fall. You trust your ability to float, you will float. That's the perceiving mind telling you you can't or can. Pardon me. In that idea, that higher self thought is pure. Trust it. That's why on an A multiple, multiple choice test, and we'll give this to the collective because you all understand this. Multiple choice test, your first intuition answer in that was right. It is only your perceiving mind that doubts it. How can I be right so quick? I can't be that smart. Oh, no, 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 no. And you change your answer and you get it wrong. The first answer is always, always, in all ways, correct. Take it, follow it, be it, and see where it goes. That's the challenge of the fear of the paradigm that is perceivable as an acceptable, comfortable, secure reality you are perceiving to be. Beyond that is your higher self going, knock, knock. How you doing? Try this, try this, and you thwart them away, and then something comes through, or otherwise none of you would be listening to this conversation. So obviously you listen to your higher self, and that is your thought. That is your voice. Hi, how you doing? I'm fine. How are you? Wonderful. That's your higher self. Speak with yourself in public if you must. That shows people when they ask you, who are you talking to? God. And they'll go, okay, I'll leave you alone. That's how it works. Be the higher self. Trust of the first initial thought. Act upon it. Talk to yourself. Be beyond yourself and only watch it unfold in its magic. It's Christmas presents presented every day, every day around you. Unwrap them. It is only you who chooses not to. Go ahead. Yes, I noticed that since I started channeling, my third density has gotten much happier, much lighter, much more fulfilling. Oh yeah, that just speaks to speaks to me as I, I used to call it law of attraction, but mm. now it's just God recognition. Um, very good. Very good. It's and God remember. recognition within me that I am what I bring to me because I am who I am, and oh, yes. God is. Oh, certainly. So yes. that that allows me to be exactly who I am in this yes. density. And here's the vibrational understanding I would like to equate to you with that. When you are yourself, truly, you are only happy because you are acting upon your happiness. That, and here's where it's discounted, that is a vibration. We'll bring in Palia. Yes. That is a vibration of you. Now, entities, when you vibrate happiness, you attract happiness happiness but you are looking for the happiness don't look for the happiness know that you are changing the vibration of the collective by being happy and you are representing to the collective that of which they yearn urge 
are beckoning them to be. Otherwise, they wouldn't be in your reality. Period. They would not be co-creating the moment if you were not representing in the mirror of reflection the recognition of that of God. So be that moment of self-expansion to no public scrutiny, no fear of the outside enacting upon them in almighty oh, their approval. No. You are expressing. So, Jim, in that fashion, you are being you. You have turned on many lights because of your representation of that of unconditional love. It's the recognition of the vibration that the other entity that knows may not perceive with eyes. In your five senses, we'll just shortcut that. And they see that in the feeling inside. You are now more vibrational feeling than ever. But don't let say you need to equate it to some idea with the senses. Forget that. That's over. Trust that you are giving it out vibrationally. Anyone, anyone, anyone within your 360 degree viewable sensory idea of reality is in co-creation receiving every moment your vibrational state. If it is different than their believable, it will knock on their door. And their door will open up, and then that person, by your offering, has the ability to take that as a choice. Whether they take it or not is not a concern of yours. It is your offering, and that's all you need to do. That's the individual allow. It's a free will choice for them to express themselves as that of God or not. And maybe another time, another place, that'll be perfect for them. But it doesn't matter in this now. Don't try to make anyone fit your world. Then you continue the separation. Your vibration has already done that. Yes. Thank you, Pelia. All right, I'm back. Thank you. That sounded like Pajar to me. Yeah, that was Pelia what? from the Esasani civilization, the yeah. higher self of Rakia, Roxanne. Thank you for being Roxanne. Mm, most welcome. It is uh, most exciting. Hmm. It is most exciting. We're learning so much from from you and those that are with you mm -hmm. and are you. Mm -hmm. Let's invite uh, other people in the audience to speak. I think there is a little um, uh, wait in line, so I would uh, invite people first to wait in line to, to ask their questions. In chat, there is a written line. I think Jay had a question. Jay? Uh, Jay, Earth and Jay, and then there is a ma major question, and uh, Hayan has a question. All right, um, next is Hayan. Hello. <clears throat> Thank you. And greetings, go ahead. Um, I uh, want to go back to the idea of um, how we co-create this Earth reality. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking about, for instance, wars, or mm -hmm. people, people who experience a lot of bad things. Mm -hmm. And we all have co-created this. Yes, most certainly. To get... Uh, to to have the opportunity to to choose something to to experience change, mm -hmm. and in this uh, new age community ideas, some of them are talking about just choose a different reality, yes, uh, as Bashar would say, mm -hmm. and I feel that it's it's like, um, you know the the people who who the children who have died, they have chosen this reality. Absolutely. Sacrificed, in a, in a sense, themselves to give us the, the chance to experience this change. And, and I think it's, it's, uh, maybe it's a better way to, to experience this change by doing something about it. We are doing something about it. For the first time, the collective truly now knows war does not work. Every other war, it worked for them because it was the idea of flags. Do you represent something, Hayan? Do you represent a species, a collective, a race, a flag, a country? If you do, you are separate. In that, multiply that by an entire country of, let's say, representing the United States. Let's take hmm, the Middle East 
Are they not representing themselves in separation? And when someone treads on them, they put up their wall. And therefore, when you put up a wall of an army, you only get a war. With no army, no war. Oh, yes, but someone will come in and take over the entire world. No, they won't because there's no energy to feed them. Now, stand by. Listen close now. In the idea, for the first time, I have told you now, listen to this. Everyone is saying war doesn't work. There are soldiers around the world that are just walking away for the first time in the way, not in the way that they did, let's say, deserted, went AWOL in the time of your Asian wars. There's several over there that they just gave up. No, this is different. They're just saying no, facing any consequence. But also, the vibration comes from knowing that it's not what the entire collective, not just the individual, in the co-creation that is being represented to that individual of the entire collective is no longer choosing. So your wars will not be tolerated anymore in that limiting term. They just won't be given any energy. The politicians will now realize that the people that are paying them are shifting. Therefore, they will vote in its due time a difference of that. But you want to rush everything, but truly Guys, collective, you just woke up. Truly, the harmonic convergence was 1987. 2012 was your new earth shift. You just got here. You can't take 7 billion people and ram it down their throat. Then you will be here for another million years undoing that idea. There is no better representation until you represent that with no conditioning no musts no I'm angry that's not right because that's only feeding the same idea whenever you say and protest against anything in occurrence that sustains you are literally feeding the lion that is making you fearful period what you do as Bashar said shift your awareness and look and the reality you want because where is intention Intention feeds that paradigm with the energy that you are giving it, period. So you give in anger and fear and don't want that, that sustains it. You shift, ah, there's the new earth. I see co-creation. I see everything free. I see everything in unison. You dream of what you as the individual, because the one are all. And in that, you choose the new belief of what you want to see. Act upon that. Do unto others as you done to yourself. Your idea of you is how you give to them. Not an obligation, not in wanting to change, not in you need to, for that sustains it. You just be that of your highest joy. Then, listen, then the two earths, which have already split, you have a 4D Earth and a 3D Earth, but they're co-created here and now because everything is here and everything is now. So in the vibrational sense on the co-creation of the Earth that is happening, the ones that are continue to feed the Earth that they don't want, sustain it until enough of those choose not to even look at it because that feeds it and shift and dream and be and act upon the new world. And in that idea, no energy sustains the idea of war, the idea of separation, the idea of 5% of the 1% making all the money, controlling all the money in the world. That is shifted. The biggest paradigm was the euro. The euro is going to the idea of one monetary system to be collectively agreed upon and uncertain now. However, that was the model, much like your idea of different uh, employers treating their employees differently than it was in the 80s and the 90s, in the, even the 2000s truly, but not as much. The representation is shifting. So you have to give it time. But here, you think time is linear. You think it needs to happen. Let me give you an idea. How about each and every one of you on this timeline shift your entire awareness and change this timeline 
to where the timeline of the harmonic convergence in 1987 actually becomes the ascension of humanity and when you were there in 1987 you experience on that ascension timeline the ascension of humanity because of the work that you're shifting this entire earth to give back to that collective at that time through your probable selves as well as all the other earths that are still doing the same thing that you're not remembering because you are over there but you don't believe you're over there because you're focused on this official you then you are actually going to go back in time and experience the ascension a high probability most certainly so don't look as linear on hurrying or rushing things because that is only extending it because you're feeding the idea of separation. Does this answer your question, Anthony? Yes, yes. And but you pointed out something that is, you know, that if you Go. resist Go. it, you persist it. Go. Uh, and so resist, in a way that persist. Yes, most certainly. Yes. So that means that. You know, don't look at it. It's it's like saying, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Any yeah, and 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 shift your aware to where, to where your world is. Look how much your world has changed. If you need to spend all of your time in that idea out of 3D, then do that. You don't think you're God. You don't think you'll have all the things you need. Then you're discounting yourself. The idea of self-sustaining is whatever you want it to be and in your highest joy the reality around you uh, gives you all of the self-sustaining in that fear idea of abundance to keep creating what you love who you are but if it's not one of vibrational fun it is one of containment of sustaining then that will be the vibration that you put out law of four what you put out is what you get back so in that idea, what persists, okay, resists, vice versa, either way, that idea that you just said was perfect. Shift your awareness to what you want. You're God. You really think you're only this idea? You chose this idea for the civilization to ascend. In that fashion, you're already ascended. You are God. You're taking out of your love and honor of co-creation with other entities, taking a human civilization that has never had in any of the nows the depth of forgetfulness that you have played the game as. You set up zero to 100%. No one else has done that. You have never been this separate from yourself. But how do you know yourself if you don't know what you are? So you chose the idea of polarity to know what you are and know what you're not. And through all of this, you are now choosing love for the first time. You are shifting. Although many ideas are in that of protest, that's okay. But now you are even <laughs> going beyond that. You are expanding beyond yourself right now. Make sense? Yes. Wonderful. Go ahead. It is it is a little contradictory. Of uh, course. Still, that is your that choice it's of like contradiction. Just it's sitting sitting and meditating and and some some of the people uh, look at uh, at us and says, "Why are you sitting and meditating instead of doing something?" Let them let them say that. That's your offering to show them that you are free will choice. Period. If you think you need to do something, then you are obligated to them as an authority, once again validating anything outside of you beyond your own self as God. There is no outside that has any say or do or authority over you. It is only your belief system of acceptance for co-creation because you're lonely, you're scared, you're unloved or something. Some kind of self-acceptance is in you, deserving maybe that you need to listen to the outside because you're not taking the action that they deem in a perpetuating system that you are actually dismantling. So let them choose their own action and let them criticize and give them back exactly what they are, love. Give them back chocolate-covered kisses. Mwah. Yes. <laughs> most certainly. Mwah. Thank you. You're most welcome. Go ahead. I love that concept because it's you become you and whatever anybody else says 
cannot affect who you are because you are becoming the perfect person and responding yeah. in the perfect way that is you. Oh yes, most certainly. You are truly becoming you. A lot of entities through the paradigm of that of nirvana taught by the Buddha idea was misled in the fashion of you become nothing. No, 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 no. You are actually remembering and falling in love by acting on your highest excitement who you are. The identity that you see in the mirror is losing the ego and gaining you. That's why you are getting happier with who you are. You never lose the identity. Roxanne is becoming more of Roxanne, period. Yeah. She is becoming and falling in love with herself. That only gives off, again, Palia Bashar idea, only gives off the vibrational love that is inherent in all of you because you were created of that. So that's the offering. Let them choose. If they don't choose what you are, so be it. That's the gift that God gave you. Extend the courtesy and allow God to give you unconditional love. You, God, give them God unconditional love. Go ahead. Uh, you just raised the point, actually, Hayan raised the point, um, meditating versus doing. And mm -hmm. you sort of argued for, uh, in favor of meditation and against doing things. And it goes against my preaching that, you know, even a light working has to be successful just in a new way. Ah, let me give you an idea. Yeah. A light worker it, that has to be successful is only, only, only birthed listen now, from failure. That is a polarity. There is no success failure. There is only is in the moment that of you choosing from no thing to something expressing that in the moment. Continue that something as a definability for acceptance become nothing once again and then leave it and become something again. Sustain that something and then you become Enslaved, conditioned, masked, ego, once again. You want to understand that you don't need to be successful. Your offering already being here on earth is enough. You are already giving. That is enough. You got to trust that because your vibrational presence of unconditional love is always pulsating in a 360 degree bubble forever. And in that idea, you are offering love. You are expressing yourself. So if anyone wants to be meditative, let him be that. Ah, now here comes the fun part. There is always an available slipstream of action, that of no effort, zero effort. If it looks like an effort, don't do it. If it looks like a job, don't do it. It looks like you need to, don't do it. It looks like in order if I do this, I will get this. That is conditioning your free will love for a receivership. You cannot condition unconditional love in order to receive bullshit. That is conditioned love. That's not love. What that is is a paradigm of I was taught that if I give enough, if I'm successful enough, I will get back. That is religion. Period. That's the only place humanity learned to give in order to receive from the construct of religion. But without religion, hmm, you wouldn't know your God. So we'll take that idea. Be the meditation, and when you're ready to take action, know you will because it'll be fun. Then, if that's the co-created moment of action, then you'll give back in that manner. But here's the gift. You're already giving and you're already receiving by being. That's why you called yourself human beings, period. Go ahead. I believe that what, the idea of meditation is your now, and it creates the future nows. And if there's an action to be taken, that will be created in the now as well. Perfect. And, and move forward in a now motion. So uh, you do not have to preconceive or or ah. identify or do anything in the now that is not now bingo because where does preconceive come from it comes from the known you are explorers of the unknown so in the now you represent that of the unknown by not conditioning it with the known 
which only continues your framework of acceptable reality. But the now represents the idea of the unknown, follow it, it may will be equatable to an action of known, experience that is around you in familiarity, but the idea will be beyond what you have experienced in that fashion, only expanding your conscience into more than all that is. And in that, you widen your container and allow more probabilities and possibilities of yourself to experience yourself in the expression of yourself, no matter how you choose to express it, that of meditation, that of sleep, that of wake, that of action, that of no action, does not matter. It's all expression because you are present as a human, period. Remember what Bashar said. Any one of you is outside the matrix. The whole thing collapses. So don't tell me none of you belong. You all belong exactly where you are and you are representing the both the simultaneous giving and receiving by being go ahead yes beautiful uh, i guess you lost me um that's all right I, when I, cook, I, I know i have to put water to make a soup if i don't do the soup in the right order it will be unedible mm -hmm. i have to like start with water then put vegetables there and stuff if that is the way you perceive it to do it, then yes. However, many people eat soup dry. Why? Because that's their choice. Don't look at the way you do it for others to do it to get the same experience because each experience of action is an individual expression of receivership of all the possibilities of humanity. Intended to be a good soup. Mm, their idea of a good soup. Yes. That's Let all you need. The intent of good soup, and the soup will come. Yeah. But you uh, can also put something else in the soup. Yes. Go ahead. I'm not saying you're incorrect. I believe you are just looking from a different side of the same thing. Bingo. You're looking from a very high perspective. And mm -hmm. whatever you say, not whatever, the, the thing you said about... Uh, uh, advice which you gave. I think it works only if you're looking from that perspective. If you try to remain here in 3D or 3 half d and use that, uh, the soup will burn and it won't uh, it won't work. If you so it's either that or that. I mean, it's really hard to combine being in 3D and using that advice as it is pronounced. If you choose that, then it will be hard, as, and it will be in the paradigm of advice. It is truly not advice. It is an offering, and it doesn't need to be taken in any way except what you understand it has to be taken at. That's what I'm talking about. That's the depth of the paradigm you are constructing yourself as a believable reality. Look at it from a different perspective. Allow yourself to shift yourself into a shifting conscience that is all around you. And Max, you know you are more than one you. Shift oh. and see from the different idea. Expand or not. Either way, you are present, offering, love you, and honored to be in co-creation with you. Period. Go ahead. Uh, we have um, Ravi. Do you want to speak? Ravi. Yeah, I'd love to ask a question. So, Sifius. Go ahead, no. Sifius, this is Ravi. Um, I would like to shed some light, maybe, if you can, and help me. Um, I'm learning to play with uh, 3D reality a little bit more, going outside my box, for example. Um, I've been doing a lot of uh, sun gazing as of recent, and learning that I'm actually compressing this 3D reality into such of a 2D template, let's say. I would just like to talk about these possibilities and whether I can actually start time shifting on this 2D template. And when you perceive the idea of sun gazing, are you getting the blacked out sun? Are you truly staring into the sun? Or are you just lo lo looking at it lucidly? Truly looking into the sun and then realizing and seeing that it starts to compress. Right. And I'm starting to get that now. And mm -hmm. it, was, it came to me in another interview somewhere else where someone else was doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, okay. Let's play so with let me it. ask Let's you this question. Fun. I'm going to give you a perspective. Why mm -hmm. do you think it's compressing into 2D? Ah, there you go. Point. There yeah. you go. Because it feels like it's uh, flattening out my mm -hmm. reality. Mm -hmm. That's why. 
Mm -hmm. It looks more, let's say, two-dimensional, right? Mm -hmm. And so we have been talking so many you? times about 4D and 5D, but mm -hmm. sometimes... Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that right now. Uh -huh. Stay with me on this. You are 2 d your 3D reality. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So in that, you can move about 2D in a different fashion, which is 3D, but you're compressing in the view ship of 2D. You can move around it in a different fashion, hence time as well, because time is part of the 3D, 2D idea in space-time. So now you can see 2D as an easier asset to move around in because it's collapsible. Then time is within that 2D collapsible time. Now, now you can see, listen now, time is a place. Okay? Uh -huh. It's space-time. It's a place with two ingredients. The space where you created it, here, and the time you created it, at that place. So now 3D is not distant as in going over there. 3D is collapsed into 2D for you flat. That is giving you a construct to move in a 2D way that is not so unbelievable in a 3D way and you will also be in time in that place in let's say traveled in time forward or back, and then poof, change it back into a 3D world. Uh huh. That's yes. where you're going. So do yes, it. Yes, exactly. Are you excited? Yes. Very, very excited. Um, the magic and wizardry and the synchronicities I've been having recently are all mm -hmm. leading me towards these type of ideas and just loving the enjoyment of breaking out of all these boxes and exploring them. Let the me wonders. give you this. There are very few that have been taking this on as a way because the, let's say, the intellect it takes, and this is not any way degrading to anyone, so please calm down. This is inherently given at birth to use this as an expansion. Everyone knows this, but it is feasibly harder to equate this, but your mathematical intellect you were given yourself as a waking up part of waking up idea triggered that as well as a few others. There will not be many that understand this concept is what I'm trying to say for those reasons. However, the offering is still there for you to bring that forth as a way to deconstruct the validity of the world they consider reality when it's always collapsible, always paper thin, and always malleable. And with time, just lean on it. and You'll see how flexible it is. All right, go ahead. Make sense? Oh, that but does make a lot of sense. Yeah, I've got a lot more practice to do with the sun, and mm -hmm. um, I'll let you know how I get on in the future with it. And remember this. It's not a discipline. Discipline was taken out of context. You are actually a disciple of learning yourself. So don't look at it as a, let's say, a conditioning of discipline you need to because that's only going to thwart your efforts of joy. Do it in the uh -huh. rhythmic moments of, hmm, I feel like doing it. That is when it's fun. That raises your vibration. That brings the fullness of the moment into it. Discipline yourself as in you're learning a new discipline. Awesome. Go ahead. Uh, that's pretty much everything. So you. Jim was holding, a, 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 a trying to pull, try not to channel, but it's hard for him not to channel. So somebody oh. came, we let him through. So. Oh, of course. We want to speak, uh, I guess, on the topic we raised. Mm. Welcome. I just want to say, consider now is your full existence, your future, your past. Everything is now. This way you can picture what now is and what now can be. Everything that is now is everything that is future and past. Therefore, when you picture the now as the now, picture all those things that you want for yourself that will resonate in the now, and they will be with you. It is not a hard concept, but it is a hard belief for your species to keep the thought pure. Do you understand? It just is now, and everything that exists in the now is everything that exists. 
for you. Yes. And we shift, how, no matter how we do it, in what way we do it, we shift to another parallel reality. Mm. That You're is all existing the, right here now, right now. You are the God, spirit. That is what you are born with. That is the light of your internal and external being. That is all of your three dimension as well. As it was mentioned, three dimension is a gift of experience. But to understand the experience fully, you must live in the now and project it into your past and future. All right, let's, uh, let's ask more questions. Uh, I guess next is Sabrina. Can you bring, uh, bring up your topic? And maybe now, now um, Rock, uh, Asipius and our guest who comes to Jim could answer the same question from different perspectives, hopefully from the same perspective. Sabrina, you have your microphone. Okay. Um, my question was sort of a follow-up to what Hayam had brought up. <clears throat> Um, that even though we know that other everyone has created their own reality, <clears throat> we still observe the pain and the war and those kinds of things. How do we keep ourselves um, um, from not connecting to that, being that we are empathic? Okay, everyone is empathic. Everyone is connected. When the body is, let's say, your finger is cut, the entire body knows and the entire body sends what you call understanding healing to that point of view. So every time your collective is cut, you are always sending your empathic love. That is the feeling you are giving the healing to them, whether you are truly knowing it. You equate it because you only had definable understandings as pain and sorrow. But here's what's tough for you. That is expression of individuality. If you thwart it, if you condition it, you sustain it. How do you discount from it? You don't. You look at it as unconditional love. That shows you the new representation within you to define it as love. Although it sees you through your past, definable pain, sorrow, killing, murder, rape. But it's not that. It's an expression of all that is. It is God representing himself in the fashion of humanity, being from complete dark, knowing it was going to illuminate in some beautiful now, but without the work of experiencing all nooks and crannies of humanity, then you don't complete the idea of yourself that you chose. Go ahead. Unconditional love for yourself creates yourself in perfection. So, not uh, let's say if we're observing um, the people that, that are in pain or engaging into helping them in any kind of way means we are continuing that when they come to that, you um, and they ask you Sabrina I love what you do I love your fun I love your happiness what do you got that's when you give them the words but if you walk upon another that is what say and we'll give you a good one here because this is what you are the chosen when a man bitch slaps a woman in public do you go and beat him up Yes, then do that and sustain because that's your best of your expression of yourself at all times, period. But if you go up and say, hey, there's another way, that's another aspect of yourself in representation. Or you just let it go and let them express themselves in understanding themselves fully, much like God is doing to you. Have you not committed a sin in your life? Hmm? Have you done anything, any of you, that you regret, that you deemed as a sin? For without religion, without God, you would not know sin. But sin was needed to know God. Once again, part of the paradigm. Now, Sabrina, 
Have you done anything in your past life, anything, in any way, shape, or form that you regret? If the answer is yes, I would think that you were happy that God didn't come in and say, hey, what the fuck are you doing? You can't do that because that's not my choice. Ah, oh. Then you would be under God. You would be under worship to God. God doesn't want that. God is eternal. God is love. God is unconditional. God is let, let, let humanity express in any way they can work through their own injustices to find their love, to find their flower, to find their fragrance. But if you don't allow them, if you stop them, that only gives that entity ego, self-sustaining security, and say, who are you to tell me what I want to do? And that continues the separation, the flags. The countries, the groups, the ascension, the unascended, the wake, the unawake. You are one. You are all. You are unconditional love. Allow them to flourish in the Garden of Eden. Once again, of love you've provided. But you cannot tell them you cannot go to this part of the garden or that part of the garden. You must plant this. You must plant that. And that is not love. That is a condition of a paradigm of self-sustaining acceptance for your own ego construct to make a difference. You are already, darling, making a difference. You are already being that to all that come into your vibration. You are already offering. And when they come to you, because your light is shining so bright, it can do no other except draw the lost in from sea. And they will come to you and say, darling, you are that of un, un, unparalleled understanding. Please show me what you have. And you will speak the words of unconditional love perfectly synchronistically set up in that vibrational now and then you will offer yours and then allow them to choose their own choice of destiny for themselves for that is the freedom that is the pathless path of freedom that is love which you are go ahead oh very nice thank you I, I love that I love that Asipio, thank you very much for your bringing up the vibrations and speaking from this high perspective. I, uh, I, I get elevated, but then I kind of drag back, and I guess it is my choice to, to remain grounded in certain ways or grounded to sort of 3D. And one of the words which kind of struck me was that you defined human collective as a Lucifer. And no, again, no, 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 I did not. No, stop. There is an oversoul called Lucifer who is offering their polarity through an idea. They are not the collective oversoul. I did not say that. Humanity is using Lucifer as an asset to offer polarity. This oversoul is not happy fashionably. But it knows it wants to give out of their love for humanity polarity. If you are unconditional love, you know you don't want to do bad, and they know what they are, but they have to represent because that is what they agree to, to offer through different entities that representation of polarity. Once again, if I don't know what I am not, how do I know what I am when I'm completely in the dark? So Lucifer is a guest, invited. Absolutely. Co-creation invited. That you can express as Cabal, Illuminati, and there's many, many names for them. Not the actual entities of humanity, no. They are those in connection with that entity, that oversoul, to represent certain things to the human. And Makes Lucifer sense. would be... Uh invited everywhere in their physical world, right? There is no physical world without Lucifer. I don't understand the question. Like how far does this invitation go? It is... It's oh, not they do not come in physical. here physically. Lucifer does not represent a physical human being in any way, shape, or form. Oh, no, I didn't mean that. I mean that oh. Lucifer is kind of I physical to negativity and duality. Like there is good and bad, yin and yang, and Lucifer would be any... Anything bad, right? Anything that is contradictory of the ones that are choosing to use that as a tool. Yes. And the rest of them are memory, 
understanding reflections. So Lucifer is main. Lucifer has not been here the whole time. Lucifer is in what you would call negative negative 4500. In other words, uh, we'll call it BC in your idea was the presence given of the new shift of this polarity. There were many Christs and many understandings of polarity through different modalities of your, let's say, collapsed timelines, that of mm, Mu, Atlantean, Lumerian, in the remembrance of your DNA. That's why you have remembrance, but they were not along the same timeline. You collapse several timelines to come up with a new idea that's constructive to the furtherment of humanity. There's not one earth, there's not one timeline, there's not one history. There's an infinite number, and they all are used in fashionable remembrance to intertwine into the now understanding of humanity to give the furthering of humanity. Make sense? All right. As a scientist, I need to kind of characterize the phenomenon. And Lucifer now is something very human, but how far beyond humanity does it go? Does it go to reptilians? Does it go to Pleiadians? Oh, no, 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 no. They are an oversoul being themselves. They only re re represent that of polarity, their only job, to humanity. That's it. So... Uh, They're but, offering the omega in the alpha and the omega. They're offering the bad or the evil in good and evil. But without them, you don't know who you are. you got to trust this. But if you were all good, you would have not woken up. You would have not understood. If you were perfect and happy as a human and everything is good, you would never wake up. You would never ascend because there's no reason to. But other civilization also ascended, right? They also had their, their, their Saturn and devil and negativity which they had to overcome to ascend. Oh, yes, but not at this depth of separation. Oh. No, 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 no. Never at this depth. So and are you saying reptilians they didn't have their Lucifer? No, no, no. And don't harp on this Lucifer idea. That is the construct of Lucifer given by the Cabal to know that the one that are waking you up is Lucifer. He's doing a service. That can't get out, so to speak, in that idea. So, Go that, ahead, that, young. so this Lucifer is very human, right? No. Very no, low, he low is low an oversoul. Much I mean, like fire is an oversoul. He does not represent in any fashionable way a human being. You no, just no, I, I don't say very human as a being. I am not understanding you. It is a very a phenomenon which is specific to Earth and not specific to other civilization. Of course. Because there is no other idea of this idea of negativity anywhere else. You must remember, you are that separate where only evil could take place, period. You cannot equate to anything outside of humanity. That's why you guys are the number one show in all of the nows. Because out of humanity came possibilities and probabilities of expansion beyond that of any other physical world of the, let's say, 368 in your solar system alone and let's say infinite number in your galaxy alone of physicality representations that was never understood to this depth until humanity came and everyone choosing that awareness now to see the possibilities of this species that took on the hardest task of all the nows to really really be 100 percent separate from himself herself itself that of God make sense yes beautiful and how was the polarity before 4500 BC? Was it less or not at all? No, the polarity was very much present, but there's nothing equatable to an idea of what you would call polarity as evil to that time. That's a collapsed timeline of Mu. But we'll say this. It is that of a constructive ego tyrant idea of enslavement. Does that make sense? Yes. It was that kind yes. of a construct. That's equatable enough for you to get the idea around that. Mm. Could you expand on a collapsed timeline, please, Sophia? Sure. Let's, uh, let's look at this. There was a timeline of Cro-Magnum that was truly shifting itself into other selves, other realities, spending little time as a human. 
okay in other words focus more of itself it was fully aware in the idea of becoming let's say translucent trans uh, self shifting itself around much like that all right that idea of awareness was fully let go of as more and more exciting things happened in 3D as Cro-Magnon began to understand itself. Spent less time in dream state, spent less time in shifting conscience awareness from other perspectives, that of your totem pole, seeing why I'm an animal, representing the bird, shifting its conscience, truly like you can now, but you forgot, up to being a bird, getting the bird's eye view. How do you think they hunted so well? They knew where it was. They shifted their awareness into the attributes of awareness, consciousness. So what it did is as it became more, let's say, better at things, it became more focused in the idea of humanity. So in the idea of humanity and that now, you became more constantly in a series of now, more focused upon now being a human. What was forgotten, the timeline collapsed, is everything you learned about shifting your conscience from there. Then the new timeline shifted parallel Earth, no longer validated that collapsed timeline of the ability of shifting your conscience from here to the bird, to the grass, to the wind, to the moon, to the sun, to the star, to everything that you are co-creating in the moment because you are conscious, period. That's a collapsed timeline. Makes sense? Got you. Yeah, thank you very much. You're welcome. Uh, Sabrina, would you like to go with your question? Yeah, um, I was wondering if you could speak to us about um, how to create future selves. Ah, future selves are already there. You don't need to create them. What you need to do is be aware okay. of them. How do we connect to them? All right, to I'm going to tell you. Stand by. I got you. You're connecting with me, darling. Trust that. All right. I see Sabrina five years from now. Do you? I'm asking uh, Sabrina. Not at the moment, no. Well, close your eyes. Imagine yourself in five years. Go. One, two, three, four, five. See that self. Do you see yourself? Yes. Okay. Where are you? Um, are you in your house? Or are you on the moon? Where are you? I'm in a different house. Perfect. Dad, now look around in that house. First thing I want you to do is smell. Breathe in from that you. Breathe. Do you smell anything distinctive? Cake. <laughs> Wonderful. Now go into your kitchen. I see your kitchen. It's got an island. It's got marble tops. It's got white cabinets with glass see-throughs. It's got a double open freezer, refrigerator rather, with a below freezer, stainless steel. I see a double oven on the wall and it's trimmed. It's trimmed in stainless steel as well. Then your oven, it's a gas burner and there's a silver, let's say, let's say smoke inhalator, exhaler, I don't know what you call it in this fashion, above it. Above the island there are many pots and pans hanging from that and then on that I see that you are caking, baking, working this entire thing. You are walking in and I see you in a green idea, smock or mock idea, very loose shirt with of course yoga pants on. Your hair is up on left and right and I see your earrings hanging down. All you have to do is see that. I have given you in your future. You see that, describe it, be that, live that, smell that, act as if, open up, cook the cake, feed it to the people, talk to the people, be in as in you're from, that connects you to yourself. You have not created it, it is already now. But in the fashionable idea of time, yes, you are creating it by acting from that, being that, living that, loving that. No matter what the imagination tells you, you trust. When it says it can't be that, that's limitation. Give it a vacation. Oh, I'm sorry, limitation. You stay over here for a few. I'll be back. Go back to that, be that, live that, fill it, and that's what you will bring into your reality because the universe, the conscience, is neutral. It will say, no, you can't have this. No, ever. Because you are all of it. Make sense? Yes. That's the Sabrina yes. I see. 
You tell me what you see. Be that, live that, love that. Create that in a fashionable series of now. Don't look when. Don't look how. Don't see I need a new avenue to get more money to have this big monstrous house because then you have to put in time. Then you have to put in products and processes that have nothing truly to do with the price of fish in China. That is a limitation. See from the end result, be the end result, live the end result in a fashionable now. Go ahead. I see. Thank you. Yes. I, I got it now. You're most welcome. Uh, Brian, um, and maybe after that, if Angela and uh, Kim could speak. Brian, can you speak? Um, greetings, my friends. I, I don't really have a question. Um, I'm just one to, I'm listening, just being the observer right now. Jim, do you have any? Let somebody else speak. All right. Um, Angela, I, I, can you speak? You need to unmute yourself. Angela? And no. Yeah. Angie. Angie, I, I see you moving, but I don't hear you. No, I think connection is not good. Okay. Yes. Continue. Uh, Kim. Angie is here. All right. How are you? Hey. Good. We Doc, hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Most certainly. Go ahead. Angie, go ahead with your question. Can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes we hear you fine. Yes, we hear you. She must not hear us. All right. Uh, Kim, are you there? Uh, do you want to speak? And next, Sarah, if you like. Oh, I guess we have problems with the communications. Anybody else? I guess I would like to say something yeah. about, I got a new perspective from you today, Osifius. Thank you. You're most welcome. And that is that we are still getting a change, experience, experiencing a change, even though we are not directly interacting with, with the wars or anything on another level. Oh, most so, certainly. Excellent observation, Entity. That is most certain that you are offering healing, even though you may not be experiencing it in the moment. Once again, when something is hurt upon the body, the entire body knows and the entire body sends healing love to that. You may not be aware of it, but you are part of it, most certainly. Go ahead. Yes. And uh, recently we had this mindset uh, globally that we can, that we, that we could invade another, um, other um, countries. Now that's a no-no. We can't do that. No, we everybody has said no to that, and uh, so we have changed our mindset. So it would be, mm -hmm. yeah. So it'd be that kind of shift. Mm -hmm. There were things that we just no longer valid, easily equatable to anything in your, in your timeline of the past that was commonplace. That's no longer taking place because no longer it is being fed the energy of that of something to be experienced. Once you shift your energy away from something you do not choose and put it into what you choose to be as a reality, then that other thing no longer is there. It's forgotten in that idea. We may be remembered, but not usable. Very good. Yeah. Yes, Hello. thank you. Hello, Sophia. This is Sarah. Hello, Sarah. How are you, doll? Good. Thank you for coming. Mm. Um, I have a question about amplification. Mm -hmm. I keep imagining myself with some sort of crown on, gold. Mm -hmm. and a tool. Mm -hmm. Yes, a tool. From your past. Mm -hmm. The golden crown of knowledge through your idea, civilization of that, of what you call. Go ahead, give me the answer. Where were you with the golden crown of knowledge? 
come on. Between Egypt and the you Nagas? Between. You weren't between. You were. Egyptian? Mm -hmm. So. Did the Nagas have anything to do at that point in time as well? Let me ask you a question. Do you want the Nagas? Are you looking for the validation still of Naga? No, no. I, I I'm feel asking you, Naga. What do you feel? I feel Naga energy with the crown. That's a representation. Okay. So the crown and Naga, but Egyptian as well. Yes. So make the connection. Was I a Naga in the Egyptian times? No. You were Egyptian, speaking with your other self as a Naga, in that fashion, giving yourself the gift of the crown of knowledge. Ta-da! Oh, okay. Because I keep feeling that. And what is... Okay. What does it do for you? Yes. I'm asking you. It's making me think that about the gold and the crown and amplification. Okay, great. Amplification is the key word. This is your tool to amplify selves of past selves into this now for expansion. It is a tool. Amplify what? Whatever you choose. That Makes was my sense. question. Amplify what? Whatever you choose. That's mm. the idea. You're giving yourselves but you can't equate it to one linear idea of an item of, let's say, representation in any now. Okay? The Achilles heel idea was exactly boom, right where it was, but the rest of the body was perfect. Right? So he never thought about the rest of the body, but he always focused on the Achilles heel. You're focusing on one little tiny thing. If the amplification is what you're focusing on, that's it. No, it's what it does that opens up the rest of the world to Mm. Okay? Much like when someone gives you power, they give you authority. Remember when you were a child and someone said, you can do this, and you just filled your heart, yes, I can, and you shifted your whole reality and you went out and did that, accomplished, became, showed, be felt, lived, same thing. You are amplifying that. This is a tool for you to bring forth, not the candy, the validity of what your abilities are. Every single one of you can teleport. Every single one of you can biolocate. Every single one of you can solve any fathomable problem of history anywhere in all the nows, period. It is only you who do not say that. So you give yourself ideas to help you remember who you are. So you, that fashionable idea, as Sarah, I know her as Jenna as well. That Jenna. idea, yes. That idea is for you to take, put on the crown in whatever fashion, think of whatever you want to think of and get the immediate answers and expand yourself. Make sense? Yes. Oh yeah. That was my question. The amplifier why? Because I'm just like, whatever whoa, I keep seeing choose. it. <laughs> whatever you choose. It's like an outlet on the wall. Wherever you want to be, plug in. Mm. Thank you. You're most welcome. Okay, Sean has a statement. Sean, uh, the microphone is yours. Uh, yes, I just want to say much love to you and uh, all the questions I could have answered, or oh, sorry, asked, are already answered, so I have no questions because they already are answered, so I just want to say much love. And much love to you, Sean. Our eternal gratitude for your presence in this co-created moment. It is our honor to be amongst you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Asipius. Um, you speak on a very high level, and this resonates with part of me and resonates with part of everyone around. I'm apologize. I want to apologize. I want to change the topic uh, somewhat because I think we should close in about 15, 20 minutes. Mm -hmm. I have a topic which is just sort of our focus of attention recently shifted to Elohim. Mm -hmm. uh, we were asked by members many times about Elohim, and recently we were given a sort of insight into who they are, more specific insight. 
And I would like you to expand on uh, who they are, our relationship with them, are they physical, are they non-physical, and that sort of thing. The Elohim in that idea were part of your awakening process to see yourselves other than the victim of that God of Jehovah. You are creators of Elohim for yourselves to understand yourselves as beyond yourself. You are creators of Elohim for yourselves to understand yourselves beyond yourselves. You gave yourself a tool. There were no such thing as archangels. There were angel, angelic, but there were no archangels to battle evil until you, human, humanity, human collective, created the archangels to battle because you needed someone to fight off Lucifer and his merry gentlemen of demons. That's what you created. The Elohim created, creational idea was humanity's choice as a part of a species, civilizations, to attach to, to wake up to. Do they re are they real? Yes. You created them as a co-creation of a tool to help you realize that you are individual gods creating yourselves. Does this make sense? Yes. It makes sense, except I had a feeling that circular. more ancient than we are. There's no such thing. Oh my goodness! I'm gonna, yeah. You're gonna love this one. There's no ancient. There's no old soul. There's no new soul. There is only all that is in the moment of creation. Now, now follow me on this. If I, Osiphius, was the first time coming in as a human. My experience as a human in this now would be that of young, equatable to polarity of young and old that you have given yourself to understand time. However, my soul is as exact same age as everyone's else, born now. Now, in that idea, there are several upon that have been more involved in equatable timelines as being here a long time they have more experience in the circle between spirituality and physicality, more experience coming through the circular idea as a human than maybe another. Therefore, it's equatable to an old soul upon earth. That's the only place it's old is on earth, not all that is, because we were all born right now. So that idea of the them being ancient you are not any younger. You're only younger in remembrance of direct experience of that, of, of Earth, in equatable time. Does this make sense? Ah, uh, yeah, time is a, a sophisticated concept. Mm -hmm. I imagine Elohim is being a civilization like us. Uh, having their DNA, their bodies, and who evolved into spiritual beings way beyond physicality. No. They, they played that. Hang on. They played that. But humanity was created by you, gods, not another civilization saying, we're going to create through DNA and create a body. You were not created from another already established in that limitation civilization. You created yourselves as the adventurers you are to create humanity. You created yourselves. There's no one that said, okay, the Elohim are going to get together <laughs> in council and we're going to create humans. And they're going to get this, this, and this. No. They were a part of the ideas of humanity in co-council saying hi. You guys are in physicality before. What do you think Pleiadians? What do you think Andromedans? What do you think Makata? What do you think Akume? All of you getting together, and then they brought in the masters of DNA, the Luminary, to come in and say, or Lumerina, truly, if you really want to know the construct of it, Lumerina, or Lumerian is what you understand them as, come in and give us your DNA splicing that you have mastered in this equatable, homo sapien understandable, why there's no connection, why there's the missing link, ta-da. So in that idea, you have helped, but you were not created from 
a civilization as an entire species being under their guise. You were created as God. From God to be gods. Make sense? Thank you. Thank you. Um, You're most welcome. From certain perspective, yes. Yes, I understand. Um, uh, Ravi has a major. Ravi has uh, another question about. <clears throat> Ravi, your microphone. Microphone is yours. Uh, just a quick question, Sifius. Uh, yeah. Is there an infinite amount of dimensions? Okay. I love that. This is exciting. <laughs> yes. This is Roxanne getting excited because she's just understood this. So she gets excited, so I represent excitement, although I'm excited because it's exciting. All right. Yes, there are an infinite number of dimensions. Now, let me give you an equatable idea. Within, let's call it the ninth density, there are realities within that entire density that are infinite to be expressed inside and outside of light. Sound is a density and a world to be understood. It is much like that movie, that movie Men in Black, when they opened up the locker at the end and walked out and saw that they were just one little infinite locker in a lockers of another entire larger density. Do you all remember that? That a same idea. Yeah. You have an infinite number. We gave you, you gave you, we, a representation of humanity, gave you that of densities to understand. But as creation in the now discovered itself, everything is now and everything is already existing, however creation discovered itself, much like you are discovering yourself, you understood the ideas of more and created by discovering in the now of already created all the other possibilities of densities. So yes, there's 12, but there's a lot more than that. Yes. Uh, thank you for your answer. And my guess is uh, Thank you. But here, let me give you this idea. Densities were given for you to understand levels of yourself. But without densities, we just give you all this haphazard idea, then you don't have the equatable, let's say, intellect to start climbing the ladder to say wonderful truth, but that's way down there. Bye-bye. Oh, look at this truth and keep climbing the ascension ladder. So you give yourself truths in the moment. All truths are truth. Every new moment with a new understanding. So you expand yourself. So don't hold on to there's only seven densities, which there were before. And then there were 12. And then now there's this and there's that within that. Yes, that's all true. But you can't get the whole package at once or your head would blow up. Make sense? <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> Booyah. All right. Um, couple more questions I have in mind. Actually, I have a million, but a uh, couple more practically uh, achievable. One is, um, do you have an insight and perspective on activity of our community and human colonies in space uh, hosted by our alien friends? What is yes. your knowledge? Can, I, can you give us your uh, insight into what is happening and maybe some advice? Or uh, we invite some, yeah, devices. I guess that's a good word. Yes, opportunities like that. The idea that you have discovered, created, truly remembered, that you've already been creating the human colonies as the representation of the enactments of co-creation with other civilizations once the ability is realized for that human to be over there. That is happening now. You guys are representing that, giving back, opening up the ideas of your higher selves, of your future selves, oh, and most certainly of your past selves to this idea as well. So what you are doing is wonderful. You are doing exactly what you perceive. There's no, let's say, missteps within the idea of human activities up there in the co-creation of let's say <clears throat> getting humans acclimated to interactions with the Galactic Federation if you want to call it that limiting term it's much more than that but that's useful in this now in the interactions with others that are 
3D as well as 4D quasi, let's say, quasi beings that you are becoming in that fashionable idea and undiscovered yet, which will be your last third of your DNA to be let go of in that fashionable 4D ascension idea to see what you truly are abilities, abilities to be perceived. Now, when you go back over to the colonies, what you are doing is expanding that whole civilization to be what exactly you are getting from that person, the entities, you will shift and become the 3D, let's say, liaison in that fashion to bring those other awakening 3Ds to experience to be the liaison into the Galactic Federation, which you are now learning to become. There's, that's just one main idea, which will be, but there's many more, several family ideas, co-creation community ideas, trying models out in 3D idea as a co-creation to be brought forth to 3D ideas of physicality and other densities, mm -hmm. models, that kind of idea. Several ideas. You guys are spot on. Bingo. Make sense? Yes. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Um, and uh, for the Indian, I know, they take as long time as you wish, but uh, I'm, I'm inviting a miracle. I mean, using third-dimensional language, it would be a miracle. And um, the best miracle we produced, sort of co-produced together, was a couple of times, Jim and, our, and you and our friends played a, a play, uh, an Arcturian play in Arcturian language. Mm. So I invite you and others to unmute yourself and speak, you know, whatever language is, feels good and just maybe have a conversation in that language with some sort of translation, maybe at the end, if it is possible. And that is, I mean, the purpose of that miracle would be to uh, awaken others and to open channels within those who speak and those who listen. Most certainly. I would ask Jim to be the translator for his best intuition of that and his translations are, let's say, highly regarded since they are high regarded as fashionable ideas. However, Sabrina has not trusted yes. herself enough in the fashion that she is getting the perfect translation as well, especially with the Arcturian language that you are that Arcturian self. So. Whoever would like to speak the Arcturian language and be translated by Jim or Sabrina, so be it. For this is co-creation of expansion. And this is trusting you, yourself, as the God creator to put that out there for public scrutiny and judgment to be looked upon in any fashionable, knowing that that is your love for them to offer, for them to receive, for them to understand. So entrust it, darling. Speak your words. Go ahead, anybody. Takano no kosia katana naki, eji ki otono no oria katana, tokono no kosia ki ati, tarakato ko nana, tosiki ati ki aki atana nanaku, toruko no ko saki atana, o sana naki atakali katana. Tosiana alia kotukutu, Osiana ka takalia kotukono, Urono saki otoko, Tokona kiakata. Sakateki, ha shati a hal show, shata tala kutu, Shanakinti a la katatu, Shata kato, chikiti. Translations, anybody? This is the perfect now for all the perfect nows in you. Feel that you are who you are in this per perfection. Let it out, let it in, let it be. 
You are the god of what you want and what you need and who you were and who you will be. You must know this in your truth. You must experience the thoughts that become the truth that is. Be what you are. Visualize what you can be because it is now. Now is where you are. And this is the truth that you must grasp. You are fully light and you are fully what you want to be. Grasp yourself as the God that you are meant to be, the, the innocence of God, the purity of God, the purity in light of God. Grasp that and what will be will be truth and the latter will appear before you in a way that has never been seen by humanity before. Brian? You guys want the language? Mm -hmm. Kuskuruatana, Liskarakaskika totua, Niskarakasti skratana, Daskrika tuskurutona, Yakasti katuskurutu, Niskara niskaraka totua, Yakasti kuskurua, Niskirukutua, Niskara hiskriutua. Sabrina, you have this interpretation if you choose to use it. Not getting it at the moment. <laughs> okay. It is celebrate your now, for now is to be celebrated. Listen to your own words as you speak your now. Lift yourself out of third and into infinite. Run with those thoughts that resonate in your central soul and light. Oh, certainly. Tokonona akiaria katanana asiako lokotono. Osia katana nagi kia tikia kia tu. Torokono no kosia kia tokono no lia katana. Has katono no osio kotokoluko. Torona sia la katatono os katono no ku. Torono kosia kia ti. Esio kolono os katana nana shiki kia liaka. Takana nakas kotokolono no. Oso ko toru atoko. Torokono no kosko tokoloka, tania shiaka, torono koski ala kiti okoto, toru saka niakataki, ti shukoto, onana shiaka, toroko ton takaliaka, akania shia takatatu, toku sakata, ananana, toyati, anana kasi, tanana orokoto olokoto, Tokono kono koski atakata, tontono no kosoku kuloku tiali, tiki ototono, saka tia, toko sakataka, tantoko, tono asiaka, tano no kosi, ti yuto, aloko ataka, tento kotono, kosi ala, antani asi koto, tutu, oshiaka, tantaka, iyo siototo, tanti olona. Anakatiuko to Kolobo no Nanaki, Tani Aliako to Tonono, Osu Oto, Alona, Yu Osu Otono no Quaka. You are the universe. Feel that, but don't feel it. 
Live that, but don't live it. Experience it, but don't experience it. Understand it, but lift it out of understanding. You are limited, but you are not limited. You feel your exterior, but it is not the end of yourself. Know that inside of yourself there is something greater, something more full, something more eternal, something more advanced, something that is born to bring you out of yourself into somewhere that you are already being. Know that your being is that of this world and of many others as well. Touch in this world, for it is a gift. And let touch be a gift of knowledge to bring you out of this world and into others. For this is an experience of the known and unknown and unfelt and the, the th feeling of all that is. Be all that it is that you are. Perfect yourself in not knowing your perfection, but letting it be. Asipius, Roxy, I would invite you to wrap up with a prayer, blessing, and poem. Stand by. In the eternal words of your father, my father, our father, if you would like to deem it that, the creator, the one, the source, point zero. The children of light that you gaze upon are your brethren in that honorship that you behold. They are your brethren in that fashion to understand they are lost shepherds much like you were lost in your countless lifetimes. So understand this journey is that of each other's love. For without this love you would not be who you are today, who you are this now. So it would be my greatest joy if you looked upon each other as what you are, brethren in arms of unconditional love, to journey together through this forgetful maze of deception and illusion to find your way home. This would be my greatest joy. To be that unconditional love as the beacon of light for them to come and light their eternal flame once again, which they thought was extinguished but was truly not, only covered up by the illusion. To light that eternal flame once again upon their hearts and allow them to shine brighter than they ever imagined. And they will do the same in the offering that you have given them, that of unconditional love. This would be my prayer for all of humanity to perceive, ponder, and choose. I bid you a good moment. Adonai. Adonai. I don't know. Namaste. I don't know. Namaste. That was beautiful. Yes, that was I want to say so much thanks, Roxy, <sighs> for all you've done today. Um, if if ever I wanted anybody to li listen to a, a broadcast again, it would be this one. There was so <laughs> much information there. So oh, there was a lot in there. I know. Yeah, there was so much light and love and unconditional love there. It was. Amazing. Thank you very, very much. You're most welcome, guys. That was awesome. Beautiful. Thank Honey you, Roxy. Yes. I, I just am amazed. It was beautiful. I learned so much, and I feel differently, even. I'm much. That's exciting. I love that when you feel different. Yeah. Yes, I do. <laughs> I, do I definitely am in a new, a new place, so that's great. Yeah. Everybody, unmute yourself. Um, let's make some noise. <laughs> Boom! Yeah. yeah. Come on. <laughs> Love you, Roxy. Forever and always. <laughs> oh, that was fun.
Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, everybody, for the Thank you, Rock.